Come crawling! Traitor! You can shove your peace! Welcome aboard, Admiral. I'll wager you don't remember me. Sickard, acting captain of the bloody executioners at your service. It was kind of you to invite us. Now, if Captain Hillfear has a message for me, I bid you speak it. We have just the one demand. That you forget this bilge about making peace with the Beastmen. Ours is a nation of pirates. Always has been, always will be. Deny us our right to plunder, and you deny who we are. Too bloody right! Pirates till we die! What we want, we take! Piracy has no place in our future. What'd she say? Pirates have no place? Our nation has prospered through piracy, tis true. Yet it is but one part of our long and storied history. Centuries ago, our ancestors led a failed rebellion and were driven from their homes with little more than the shirts on their backs. In fear of their lives, they sailed south until they came to these shores. Finding the land occupied by kobolds, however, 
they were forced to turn to piracy in order to survive. And survive they did. But not so long ago, when the Empire threatened to crush everything we'd built, we set aside piracy and joined hands with our neighbours. This too was in order to survive. And survive we did. Time after time we fought the Empire, and time after time we won, and through trade with our newfound allies, we prospered more than we ever did through pillaging and plundering. The Empire teeters on the brink of collapse. Ere long, provinces like Wurlit and Bosia and many others will regain their freedom. When they do, our matchless fleet will lead the world in a new golden age of commerce. The tides favor us, and the ocean beckons with her vast bounty. But if we cling to the old ways, this great ship we call Limsa will trade the boundless seas for a lagoon. Shall we scorn the world's wealth for a plundered pittance then? Or shall we embrace change and thrive like our ancestors before us? The choice is yours. But if we are to prosper in the coming age, the whole of Vilbrand must become our ship, and a Kobold and Sahagin our crewmates. Rouse in words. Might even be some truth in them. But pirating's all we've ever known. And we ain't about to give it up just because you say so. Still, we're all the Minsons here and no one wants a war. So where does that leave us? Long before you became Admiral, I heard you was captain of the League of Lost Bastards. That true? If so, you'd know how we pirates settle our differences. A duel. Very well. As Admiral of Limsa Laminsa, I accept your challenge. Over. Not till one of us is dead. Finish the job, or I will. It's the captain, Captain Elfair. Ye fool! Twas over afore it began! Captain! Seems the whelps have been yapping while their master was abed.
Listen well, all of ye. Since the signing of the Galadian Accord, we all of us have been part of the same crew. The crew with a good ship Limsa Laminsa. At the helm of that ship is the Admiral. And tis she who decides where we sail. Was I not clear on that point? Or did you forget whose deck you stand on? Nay? Then what in the seven hells are you playing at? That's all we know, Captain. If we ain't pirates, what are we? You're bloody idiots is what you are. Idiots with your own lives ahead of ye. Ye can do anything ye want. Be anything ye want. We're pirates, I, And we pirates love our loot. But that ain't our first love. Our first love is the sea. The sea! And what she brings us! Freedom! So hold fast to that. Let the brine-crusted usk that stands before you now be the last of them as knew naught save out of steel. And make of yourselves a new breed of pirate! Lad. I made ye me right hand because I saw something in ye. And I still do. You have the makings of a captain. All you lack's the belief. Well now, it seems we're of one mind after all. <laughs> Apologies for the misunderstanding, Admiral. We're with ye, wherever ye be headed. You have my thanks, Hilfir. Your choice of dueling pistol did not escape my notice. Good old Annihilator. Ender of many a proud pirate's voyage. <laughs> Mistbeards vanished into legend. And it won't be long before I take my rest in the depths. Yet be that as it may. The old ways can only truly die. When we've dealt the Empire the telling blow. There'll be stormy seas ahead, no doubt. But I'm trusting ye to steer us through to the other side.
Greetings, Patriarch. I am Merlwib Lufisvin, Admiral of Limsa Laminsa. I come before you to offer my sincerest apologies for the many wrongs committed by my people against you and yours. <laughs> you were foolish to come here. Stupid, unwise foolish. The Great Father shall have your souls for your folly. Aye. Just as we thought. Now, Alize! Quickly! You don't need to tell me! Let none pass. We must grant her as much time as we can.
a little more! Did it work? What? Ah, ah. What is the meaning of this? I'm sorry. But they died by your hand. You sacrificed them to summon Titan. Why would I do such a 
such a thing! Would that there were a cure for the victims of the Tempered. Gabu! What are you doing here? Patriarch! Please listen to me! Hear! Heed! Listen! The Great Father we have been summoning is false! He only hurts us and those we love! For a long time, his voice filled my mind. He told me to do terrible things. Awful, unspeakable, terrible things. But I didn't give in to it. And you mustn't either. There's been too much pain already. So please, end the suffering. What... what have I done? We share this child's desire, Patriarch. An end to summoning, for it spells naught but misery for both our peoples. For many long years, man and kobold have feuded over territory, pillaging and perishing for the earth beneath our feet. It may be said that we fought to survive, but what we have sown in blood, we have reaped in suffering, and it cannot go on. I would see us set aside the past and work together for peace. It was wrong of me to hurt my own in the name of the Great Father. Sinful, evil, wrong. But that doesn't mean there can be peace between us. Men cannot be trusted. The bounty of the land was to be ours, and yours the bounty of the sea. But you broke the pact. Violated, breached, broke. Unready as we were, what choice had we but to call upon the Divine to rid ourselves of your tyranny? None. And I do not blame you for it. In violation of the spirit, if not the letter, of the Pact, we took your lands for our own. The fault lies wholly with us. On behalf of all Lamincens, I offer you my humblest apology. I pray you'll find it in your heart to accept it. Yet I know an apology alone will not serve to make things right. So, we will revise the pact to leave no room for doubt. And any who violate it shall face justice swift and certain. No, we won't be fooled. Not again. Please, hear me to the end. Fleeting though it was, there was a time when man and kobold abided together in harmony, in cooperation. In those days, your people shared the secrets of smelting. Knowledge which allowed Limsa Liminsa to thrive. 
Much of what we have, we owe to the Kobolds. And so, for the good of all who dwell on this isle, I wish to make you an offer. We will bear your people's wares to every corner of the world and trade them in your stead. In return, we will bring you the bounty, not only of the sea, but lands both near and far. Whatever you desire, the Navigator as my witness, you shall have it. There will be no more man and beastmen. Just the crew of the great ship that is Vilbrand. And together, we will share in the wealth of the world. If you'll only accept our hand in friendship. We want to believe you. We truly do. But we believed you before and you betrayed us. Fooled, deceived, betrayed us! There are bad men, it's true. But there are also good ones. And the ones before you are the best of them. They were always kind to me. Caring, nice, kind, and I trust them with my life. Before I became Admiral, I was a pirate. I stole. I fought. I stained the sea red with blood. Such is my past, and I dare not forget it, however much I might want to. That is death penalty. The pistol I used to pass judgment on my own sire when he fell thrall to Leviathan and betrayed his comrades. It's loaded. If you were to point it at my head and pull the trigger, I would most assuredly die. Though it isn't much, my life is the single most valuable thing I possess. If it will suffice to atone for past wrongs, take it. A single bullet to annul the old pact and my blood to write it anew. What comes after, I entrust to this man, my second in command. I know that he will do his utmost for the happiness of all who call Vilbrand home. I do not trust you. Not yet. But Gabu does. And I will trust him.
We want you to know that we respect your faith. There's nothing wrong with giving thanks to the land which sustains you. But summoning is different. Should you hear of anyone who would attempt it, we ask that you appeal to their better judgment. Or failing that, seek our aid. We're always ready to help. Many and more of my brethren are yet in thrall to the Great Father, just as I was. If you could free them too, I would be grateful. Appreciative, thankful, grateful. It is we who should be grateful, Patriarch. I thank you for affording us this chance. Right. Let's return to the Rising Stones. Admiral, something strange is afoot at the floating city. Breathe, man. What is it? I think it's best you see for yourself. Please, come with me. What is that? A tower. You can see it too, then. I feared I was losing my wits. One moment I was patrolling, as usual, and the next it was just there. Yes? This is she. I am. I... I'm looking at it. What? Understood. Send the Elder Seedseer my regards. The communications officer. It seems this isn't the only tower. They've sprung up all across Eorzea. Nothing more is known, only that they appear to be of Garlean construction. Our allies on the Alamegan front are on highest alert. Forgive my directness, but would you join them? They may well need the help. Of course, Admiral. We shall make all haste. My thanks. I will return to Limsa to weigh our response. Look for Commander Hext when you arrive in Alamigo. And may the Navigator speed you on your way.
Thank you for coming so soon. I'll send for Commander Aldin at once, and we can decide what to do about these infernal towers. <laughs> it can't be. You're here, good. Well, well, well! To be received by such an illustrious cast! <gasps> Why? Even the hero of the peace is here! I feel quite starstruck. Is that... Asahi? His body more like. You don't fool us. Oh! You saw straight through it. Anyone would think you dealt with Asians before. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Fandan. And may I say what a pleasure it is to finally make your acquaintance. My! Straight to business, is it? Suit yourself. It is my intention to recreate the final days. To which end, I have distributed a collection of rather ingenious devices, or towers, which will, in time, give rise to the grandest of spectacles. The final days? But it was the Asians who laboured to prevent them. You're quite right, though I would expect no less from one responsible for eliminating my unsundered colleagues. Honestly, the three of them were obsessed with restoring the one true world. As a sovereign individual, however, I never had much interest in such things. I mean, why bother when you're just another sundered minion? Admittedly, Elidibus was not convinced by that argument. But thanks to you, I'm finally free of his incessant nagging. Free to use my powers as I see fit, to fulfill my heart's desire. And my heart's desire is to lay this half-broken world to waste, leaving nary a fleck of dust behind! What? Why would you want such a thing? Because I want wretched creatures who ask such meaningless questions to die! You! And you! And you! I want you all to die! And I want to die too! Oh yes! I want to die and take everyone with me in a paroxysm of pain and suffering! I'm different, you see, from the ancients who clung to dear life, and from you. So don't bother trying to reason with me. You will find I have no reason, or creed, or any such tripe. 
I just want to destroy the world. But please do resist with all your might. It will add to my enjoyment. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes peeled, for the curtains have risen on the spectacle to end all spectacles. We, the Telophoroi, shall be your performers and this very star our stage. But I nearly forgot. I have a message for you. <clears throat> My esteemed patron, Lord Xenos, eagerly awaits you at the heart of the chaos. While I wish only to destroy the world, he exists solely to relive a certain, hmm, transcendent moment with you. And it is for that reason he would reduce all to ash. Pray see to it his dreams do not go unfulfilled, for if you should disappoint him, my trusty companion here, whom I've dubbed Luna Bahamut, will burn your cities and everyone in them. Everyone out! My men will tend to the blaze. Scouts should have been back by now. I'm gonna go and find them. Oh, thank goodness for that. Sir 
The piles have been driven as planned, and the first of the beasts has roared to life. Moreover, I am pleased to report that preparations are well underway for the rest. Ere long, chaos shall reign over all the land, as befits the final days. Call it what you will, so long as my friend returns to me, fangs bared and claws sharpened, I care not. Of course, my lord. By strange coincidence, your dear friend chanced to be present when I made my declaration. I took the liberty of informing her that you await her coming. Though I confess, I may have singed her a little in the process. And why do you tell me this? Are you in such a hurry to die? Ah, my apologies. I must guard my tongue lest it be the end of me. Though, there is something to be said for such a glorious death. Better to fall to one who has it all than falter before an inferior. Huh. I shall keep it in mind as a contingency. For now, however, I shall proceed with the plan. My lord. I must find myself a new weapon. One worthy of our long-awaited reunion. Before we begin, I would like to offer my gratitude to Masters Thancred and Uriange. It is no small feat to infiltrate the Imperial capital and live to tell the tale, much less in times of civil war. Thanks to them, we may plot our course in full knowledge of how the winds blow in Garlemald. Full glad are we to have been of service. But, verily, such dangers as we did encounter pale into insignificance next to those faced by our comrades. An Asian, armed with the might of Bahamut, bent on bringing about the final days. Theatrix. He sought only to make a show of the power at the Telephoroi's disposal. 
But since then we have seen no sign of this fun Daniel or his worm. And while we've done what we can to bolster our defenses, there's no telling where he might strike next. Whenever and wherever it may be, we must use the intervening time to learn more of our enemy. Twas with this in mind that we dispatched scouts to investigate the towers. Our advance party took longer than expected to return. And when they did, they tried to kill us. Luckily, I'd seen that sort of thing before, and we were able to restrain them before they did any harm. Then it was just a matter of letting the Porksies do their work. Are you saying they were tempered? Once they'd come back to their senses, they told us everything they could. It seems that just as they were getting close to the tower, they heard an ear-splitting roar. And that was the last thing they remembered. But what worries me most is what they were saying right before they attacked. Glory be to Garlemald. The Tempered have heretofore ever been thralls to primal entities. Yet these hapless souls were compelled to accept a nation as the object of their devotion. This calleth into question all that we know of the condition. Would that the unsettling news ended there. Alas, there is more. Following the earlier reports of missing Amalja, we have learnt that other beast tribes have suffered similar losses. And we now have reason to believe that the abductions are connected to the appearance of the towers. Our scouts sighted black-garbed figures leading shackled Ixel in the direction of the tower in Dravania. The Temple Knights were able to intercept them before they could reach their destination, liberating the Ixel and apprehending their captors each of whom was found to be equipped with Garlean arms and armor. So the Empire is the common thread. With the support of Xenos, it seems likely that Fandaniel has rallied a faction of the splintered Garlean army to the banner of the Trilophoroi. Lord Hien reached the same conclusion when I shared our findings with Doma. The plan had been to march on Garlemald from the east and west in order to force a peace treaty. But the situation has changed. Dealing with the threat of the towers must come first. Given the nature of the enemy and the proven risk of tempering, I could think of few suitable candidates to aid in this task. But I am confident in my choice. What? Resistant to primal influence as they are, they can investigate the towers without fear of being turned. We are glad to put our gifts to use, Commander. Gifted or not, going behind enemy lines remains a perilous undertaking. But we must know more if we're to strike back at our foe. I'm counting on you. If it would give us the upper hand, I'd do it a hundred times over. We won't let you down. That concludes the briefing. You two, make ready and join your escort. Are you certain about this, Arunvald? Vold? 
I am. Come on, let's talk outside. So you know, I've already gone through all the formalities at the Rising Stones. Made sure to inform Jamaldor and Vmar at Ralga's Reach as well. Arnvold, I admire your enthusiasm. But this is far more dangerous than anything you have done before. I know the risks. And I also know what's in store if we don't stop Fan Daniel from carrying out his plan. With this power of mine, I can make a difference. If I stood idly by, I would regret it for the rest of my life. And you, Fudola? Is this what you want? What are you asking me for? It's not like I have any say in the matter. Don't pretend. We both know Commander Aldin gave you a chance to refuse. And you didn't. <clears throat> so the Empire's finished, is it? But that's what they're all saying that the great and glorious Garlemald slit its own throat. And now, from out of its twitching carcass, crawls the Telophoroi with bloody Xenos at its head! I fought for Garlemald. Killed for Garlemald. What was I part of? I need to know. Whatever it is. I need to know. Very well. If your hearts are set on this, I shall not stand in your way. If you've finished with your touching display of camaraderie, I have a question. Which tower are you planning to investigate, exactly? Well, the one in Girabani is said to be tightly guarded. It's patrol after patrol out there, apparently. We'd be spotted before we got anywhere near it. Which is why we've set our sights on the one in Pagalthan instead. There shouldn't be anything like as many Imperials to worry about down there. Even so, I doubt the local Amalja will look kindly on it if they catch you sneaking around in their territory. Fordola and I had a chance to learn the lie of the land in our previous forays there. We might still find trouble, but at least we won't lose our way. Well, we'd best not keep them waiting any longer. Mayhap, when all of this is over, we could take another trip to Loxeld. I would have you know I've become a rather capable swimmer since our last visit. Ha! I'll believe that when I see it. Though, to be fair, getting into deep water does seem to be a scion's lot in life. Take care, eh?
It means a lot, you know. You come in with me. I still owe you for saving my skin, don't I? Can't return the favour if I'm not there. I dare say you'll get your chance before long. That Van Daniel sounds like a tricky customer. Too much for the likes of me, anyway. But we both know I'd just be another soldier if it weren't for my gift. And I need to be a damn sight more than that given what's coming. I realise I can't hold a candle to a hero like the Warrior of Light or Alfino, for that matter. He might look like he's 12, but he's seen more action than most people see in a lifetime. No, the fact is I'm nothing like them and maybe I never will be. But I'll be damned if I don't try. They're counting on me. On us. So let's give it our all. He does not want for conviction. That much is certain. So let us have faith in him. Him and Fordola both. While they see to the towers, I would attend to another task. Chasing down this lunar Bahamut. Ah, oh, bloody thing. Can you hear me? It's Tataru. Oh, I'm happy to say we've managed to find Estinian. And I'm sorry to say he went running off again the moment we told him about Bahamut. But he did mutter something about heading to Ishgard, so if you're quick, you might still be able to catch him. Even if we set out this instant, he may already have left by the time we arrive. Have her send the Bonanza to Ishgard. It may prove useful should we need to give chase. Gladly. I'll see to it as soon as Kryl and I get back to the Rising Stones. Good luck. While you go off on your Dragoon hunt, Urianje and I will return to headquarters. We have much to tell the others. I wish you every success in your search for our elusive friend. May we all meet again ere long.
No sign of him. Not that I've ever met him before, but the way Alphano goes on about him, I'm fairly sure I could pick him out in a crowd. Speaking of which, it does seem awfully quiet. If the erstwhile Azure Dragoon had returned to Ishgard, would it not be a source of general excitement? First the Scion's coin keeper, and now you. I'm beginning to think these meetings are more than mere coincidence. Not that I'm complaining. It's been too long. Too long? You look an ilm taller and twice as rugged. It suits you, Alphano. Quieter, though. Have you been giving him lessons on how to be the strong, silent type? I... am not... Alphano! If the two of you are such firm friends, perhaps you should remember what he looks like. And what do you mean, rugged? Ugh! Had my brother mentioned what an oaf you are, I'd never have bothered looking for you in the first place. Estinian Wormblood. The Azure Dragoon. He who fought and felled the dread worm Nidhogg at the Warrior of Light's side. To think the day would come when I should see this living legend with my own eyes. Someone mind explaining what is going on? Is everything all right? I thought I heard Alizé shouting. Estinian! It's been too long. No, no, it's quite understandable. That was hardly the first time we've been confused for one another. Nor, I suspect, will it be the last. Well, I for one will not be making that mistake again. What I will say, for the second time today, is that you've grown. Inside and out. I can tell. One can't remain a spoiled little lordling forever, you know. At least someone's having a good time. You know when we were growing up, Alphano would never befriend other boys because he couldn't stand the thought of not being in charge. But maybe that's changed. He seems just as happy around Astinian as he does Arenvald. I wouldn't be so sure. He still loves nothing better than the sound of his own voice. No rest for the righteous, eh? Speaking of which, I was just on my way to borrow an airship to take me to Azisla. Azisla? How could I forget? The dragon with whom Bahamut shared the deepest of bonds. Aye, Tiamat, his mate. Even now she remains imprisoned on Azisla, though her remorse binds her faster than any shackle. I see. As the one who first summoned Bahamut, you believe she may be able to shine some light on his latest incarnation? Might I suggest that we make the journey to Azisla together? I'm not sure if Tataru mentioned this, but we Scions have an airship of our own now. I see no reason why not. 
Assuming your sister can bear the thought of sharing a deck with me. Be my guest. But confuse me with Alphano again and I'll throw you overboard. I don't know who he thinks he is, but he's nothing like Elfano painted him to be. I will admit, he is not exactly as I imagined him either. Based on what I had read of the man, I think I was expecting someone a little less... blunt? she knows naught of recent events. Perhaps you should enlighten her. Like those held here in Asisla. If dragons who worship Bahamut are required to summon him, that must mean. Your children's pain means nothing to them. They laugh at your kind suffering. But tears will not right this wrong, nor will lamentation see the perpetrators punished. <laughs> Snosk 
Electric Man. Behavior befitting a great worm. We came here to ask mighty Tiamat of the First Brood, consort of Bahamut, mother of the dragons of Maracidia, what she intends to do about the crimes committed against her children. You too were exposed to his influence. That you are yet in possession of your own will is testament to the indomitable strength of your soul. But were you to meet with Bahamut again, you fear you might succumb. Es, On the matter of Bahamut's influence, at least, I believe we can be of some assistance. If you're afraid of being enthralled, don't be. We have a cure. And while we've never tried it on one such as you, its basic principles are universal. Usk, she's in. There is no future for those bound to the past. That you committed a terrible sin, I do not dispute. But if you feel remorse, you may yet make amends. We offer you that chance. Take it, or you will forever remain a prisoner. Not of these cruel shackles, but of your own guilt. Sahaban, Seth Sol, King Mahamud. Ah. Um. 